Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I was uh, taking out the trash. Fast, affordable Core XY printers are all the rage these days, and I think we know why. Cheaty has a new entry in the game with the Q1 Pro, and they were nice enough to send me one for review. I'm Jacob with Butter Pockets, and let's jump into it. A while ago, you guys might have seen my review for the X Plus 3, and I think in all ways, this is a great upgrade to that printer, which I had pretty good things to say about, so let's jump into this one. It's a fully enclosed printer with a build volume of 245 millimeters cubed. It's Core XY with four linear rods supporting the bed, which is driven by two independent lead screws. It's surrounded by a metal chassis that keeps the printer nice and rigid, and the bed can go up to 120 Celsius. It has a tri-metal hot end that can go up to 350 Celsius and handle abrasive filament. It has an inductive sensor on here to automatically bed level and set your Z offset. It has a built-in chamber heater that can actively heat the chamber to 60 Celsius. It runs clipper firmware, which you can access through the fluid interface, and nice quality of life features like a camera and Wi-Fi. And most importantly, it's got a poop bucket and a nozzle wiper, which means this printer has a lot of really great features packed into an affordable package. But can you even afford this package? Well, right now it has early bird pricing of 469 bucks, which is an insane value for what you get. So check it out at my affiliate link down below. But it's eventually gonna go back to its regular price of $599. And I asked when the early bird pricing would end and they didn't give me a definitive date, but I wouldn't expect it to last too long, and I wouldn't expect it to last longer than, say, April. But hey, you weren't buying this thing after just hearing the specs, and I get on the internet too. I see the comments. You got this shiz for free. Why should we trust what you have to say? I get it. So I want to show you my initial experience with getting this thing out of the box, set up, and running some test prints so you can see the whole process for yourself and form your own opinion. So let's jump back to some footage I took a couple weeks ago when I first got this thing. So right off the bat, I have some first impressions. Just like the X Plus 3, they put a ton of zip ties and stuff in here to hold things down for shipping, which is really nice. It's probably going to take me a minute to get all this out of here, but it's got y'all's favorite thing. Poop bucket, huh? I'm pretty excited to get this thing set up and uh, let me go take all the shipping material out and show you guys what it does. And you can see it on the box right there. Team lift. I wish my wife was here to help me. She's not, because this thing is pretty friggin' heavy. And unlike the X Plus 3, it does not have convenient handles on the side, which is kind of annoying. So let me figure out how to pick this thing up and put it in my office. Ah, it's lighter than the X Plus 3 for sure. All right, excuse my mess of an office. You guys don't normally see this much of it, but We've got this thing unboxed, and I'll show you what was here in the top. We have a paltry amount of PLA. This is what, 20 grams of Rapido Black PLA. My opinion, they can include a spool or something. We've got a spool holder to go onto it, so let's go ahead and do that, I guess. Just pops into place, and then I could read the instructions, but who does that? Oh, guessing it just Slots in here? Oh, no way it does like this. That's really how they want you to do it? I'm not a fan of that. So, it's better than the one they had on the X Plus 3, at least it's not just behind the machine. But now, instead of your machine being this big, it's this, this big. So, that's one thing. North American power cord, some tools, including a little wrench, some Allen keys, some extra screws, a fuse, some, oh, these are extra wipers for the poop. Got some thermal grease, screwdriver, scraper, the guide that I refuse to read, a flash drive, and some glue. So let me um, take a look at, oh, the instructions for the spool are right here. Could have read that. Um, let me go through and read all the instructions that are on this thing, pull off all the shipping stuff, and then we'll plug it in. Now that I have it in place and most of the shipping materials are off, are off, I'm actually going to read the manual and then boot it up and see what it tells me on the screen because if it's anything like the X Plus 3, it'll tell me if I missed anything and it'll show me the steps I should have taken when I set it up. So I'm gonna read this and then we'll turn it on. Yeah, see they actually tell you to turn it in or uh, they actually tell you to plug it on. Jeez, 
They actually tell you to plug it in and turn it on before you take any of the shipping materials out. So that's one thing and I did not do that. All right, I've got some bamboo PLA basic here. Uh, it's just what I have, so it's what I'm gonna use. While it's booting up, we'll get the satisfying peel of taking this plastic off the door. Well, almost satisfying. All right, let's choose the language, English. Remove all the ties. So one interesting thing, and I hope they update this for you guys once you get them, the manual, and the screen are showing me ties that are not in the printer. It's showing me some that are supposed to be around the Z axis, and I do not have those. So I don't know if either the documentation needs to be updated or they just forgot to put those zip ties in mine. But it looks like I have them all removed. Remove the four screws, yep, did that. About to move the platform. Please make sure the platform is clean and unlocked. And I'm going to put the build surface on. Keep pushing the filament into the runout sensor until reach extruder. Oh, and then instead of just picking a temperature for you, you pick your own temperature, which is kind of nice. This is PLA, so I don't know, 220. It's weird. It only moves in three degree increments. I figured one or five, but you know, whatever. Hopefully that gives you guys a better view. You don't need to see my ugly mug anyway. Okay, we hit 220. Ensure the filament into the extruder, click button for loading filament until filament come out from nozzle. It's unintuitive that I should hit that button. Okay, I hear the extruder skipping. Okay, the extruder is just skipping. Filament is for sure in the extruder. I can see it in here, but Maybe by default, they loaded something like ABS that's not melting at 220. And it doesn't let me go back. So, uh, oh, well that's it. So let me heat this thing up more. Let's try 250. All right, I'm gonna cut the video and try to figure this out, but that's not encouraging. All right, 270 did it. Would have been nice if they maybe automatically heated it up to the temperature of whatever filament they loaded in there, but hey, it's working. It says to perform automatic bed leveling and input shaping before the first print to make the printing better. And I agree, so let's do that. Y'all know I didn't forget the poop bucket. And even after it hits this 60 degree Celsius temperature, which I'm using for PLA, I'm actually gonna let it sit for a little bit to let it warm all the way up and heat soak. So I'll see you guys when it's done doing that. So that took a hot minute, but it's finished. So now let's do input shaping. All right, I'd say it's time for the first print on this bad boy. We've got our PLA loaded up. Let's see what's already on here. You know what? For the first print, I'm gonna run this first layer test. I'm gonna leave bed leveling on, I guess. All right, I will be honest. I am fairly impressed. Ooh, not that impressed. So, first shot. It obviously could have been a little bit lower, but not so bad. And you just know I have to print a Benchy. It is definitely not the worst Benchy I've ever seen, but it's also not the best Benchy I've ever seen. It was obviously sliced for speed, which, you know, I'll give them that one. But yeah, I wanted to print what was on the SD card just to test it out. So I printed what was on the SD card and I really just wanted to test those things out just because, hey, it's there, let's test it out. So now what I'm gonna do is spend a couple weeks with this thing and see how it is, put it through its paces, and I'll update you guys once I've printed a whole bunch of stuff on this. I started using this printer for almost all of my prints for the past couple weeks. These are all PLA prints, which is what I wanna show you first. It's Bamboo Lab Basic PLA. So the first thing that I ran was this Cali Dragon, and you guys should be familiar with this on my channel. And I'm actually really impressed with how this came out. The layer stacking is phenomenal. It is so smooth on the sides. The overhangs in the back of the horns are really, really good. And there's almost no stringing in between the horns either. So this came out really great. I would argue this is one of the better ones out of all of the printers that I have. The next thing that I printed, you guys should also be familiar with on my channel, is this dice box that I designed. 
And the layer stacking, again, is phenomenal. It is so smooth here on the sides, although you can see a bit of VFA or maybe some ringing on the sides, and we can get into that later. You guys might wanna check out my Beaver. This is the Ace the Beaver print, and it tests some overhangs. There's overhangs on the bottom, and there's overhangs on the Beaver itself, and this came out really, really good too. It is so smooth on the sides. Again, you can see some VFA or ringing, and the stepping on the top, it's very smooth, even though, you know, it has to step up this diagonal. And again, this is just a really good print. Although this printer really isn't meant for PLA, but I wanted to test it because it's what I do most of my printing in. These are some prototypes that I did for some ABS prints that I wanted to do. And again, everything just came out. Every time I sent a print to the printer, it came out just fine. And that's what I look for in a printer is, can I just let it print? These are some vase mode prints where you can really start to see the VFAs on the side. So that's a little concerning, especially because it has input shaper and I ran it, but we can talk about that because I have some guesses. But I did all of these in all of the default settings. I didn't want to mess with it. I wanted to print it exactly like how someone who doesn't really know what they're doing or, hey, maybe you do know what you're doing and you want to trust Cheaty. I just wanted to print it with their default settings. But overall, I am impressed with PLA. Again, that's not what this printer is really for, so let's look at some ABS prints. What this printer is really good for is ABS or ASA or even more technical material prints. So I only have ASA, I can't really afford any carbon fiber stuff, so I just went ahead and printed some ASA stuff. And that internal heater, I mean, it works. I said the same thing on the X Plus 3, that if you wanna stop your ABS prints from warping, I mean, this is it. This is what you gotta do. You gotta get the heater because it really does work like they say it will. So I thought, hey, if I'm gonna do some ABS prints, let me design some stuff for my car. So that's what these prototypes were, is just a little cup holder because for what it's worth, I drink these Waikia water bottles, it is what it is, and they don't fit in my car's cup holder. So I wanted to design something where I can put it in my car's cup holder, and I did. All of the prints that I did, I sent them and they came out just fine. I didn't have to worry about anything failing, and I was able to design this cup holder for my car, and I'm just gonna put it in there, and I'm gonna keep using it. These might be a little hint of what is coming on the channel very soon, so I wanted to print some Voron parts because these should be printed in ABS or ASA, and I can definitely tell you there is no warping. This is completely flat, but like I hinted on the PLA prints, there is quite a few VFAs here on the corners and it's very easy to see with how many facets there are in this. And this is something that I would love to see addressed by maybe the print profiles or the way it handles input shaper. But besides the ringing or the VFAs, I'm impressed with this print. It came out really good. The small features all look really good. These overhangs and the stepping all look really good. Overall, I'm impressed with these prints. And the best thing is that I didn't have to use glue. I didn't have to do anything. I just let it set the Z offset, use the printer, and there was no warping. And let's take a quick minute to talk about the poop bucket. I don't really understand why they included this, even though I like that they did. I think they were just kind of trying to copy Bamboo Lab and the fact that it purges before each print. It's kind of unnecessary at the beginning of the print considering when it starts printing, it oozes a little bit at the beginning anyway. But what this is really nice for is pause prints. So as you can see here, when it pauses, it goes back to the nozzle wiper, and when I resume it, it wipes the nozzle before it starts again, which is really nice because when you do pause prints, it can ooze a little bit of filament out, and at least that's getting wiped away when it goes back to print. I was editing my video, and I noticed that I forgot to include a topic that I think is pretty important. One of the things that I see people complain about a lot with certain other printers is that when you send the file, you have to deal with their cloud service and the, pr the file that you send doesn't go straight to the printer. Well, that is one really nice thing about the Cheaty is that when you slice with Cheaty Slicer or Orca Slicer or whatever, and you send it to the printer, it's all on your local network. So as soon as you hit it, it doesn't go anywhere. It uploads instantly and it starts printing. And when you monitor it through the fluid interface and through Clipper, that's also all in your local network. So no one has access to your camera, no one has access to your 3MF files, it's all yours. So if you're one of those people that's out there going, I, God dang China is stealing all my print files or whatever, you don't have to worry about it. This is the printer for you. Going back to the topic of the VFAs or the potential ringing that I saw in my prints, I think part of that has to do with the fact that when you look at the actual graphs from Input Shaper, you can see that the maximum suggested acceleration that these graphs show you is 4,700. And if you look at the default profiles, in fact, the only things that are under 4,700 are top solid, bridge, and first layer. 
So maybe if those accelerations were slowed down to under what Input Shaper recommends, maybe we would see less of these in the prints, but I didn't have time to do that for this review. But the Input Shaper graphs show a very rigid machine with only one sharp spike in these graphs, which shows that this is a very good machine in terms of its rigidity and stability. One last thing I want to comment on, and I'm stealing this straight from Angus, although I just agree with what he said. Chidi, come on. Why is there no handle on this door? How do you expect us to open this thing? The top, handles, convenient. This, I mean, I'm guessing you're supposed to open it from here, but come on, not great. Let's wrap this thing up. When I reviewed the X Plus 3, I had good things to say. I actually really liked that printer. But what this thing does is improves on everything I had a problem with. I think that the bed leveling is much better. The X Plus 3 was a little bit finicky with that, but with this, although those first layer tests that I showed weren't exactly perfect, with a little bit of baby stepping, you can tune that in and it's rock solid. I think that the spool holder is in a better place, although I still think it's kind of wonky, although I don't really know how they could have made it better. It's overall a less bulky machine. That was one of the big things I did not like about the X Plus 3 is that the top hat was just unnecessarily big. I, I really don't even know why they did that in the first place. So this flat top hat is a much better design in my opinion. Overall, I think this is a very good machine. Every print I sent just worked. I had no failures where anything fell off the build plate or anything failed to print. I had any spaghetti, nothing like that. So that's really what I look for in a machine. And I'm glad to see that Chidi was able to send me a printer where I can take it out of the box and reliably print with it. I actually got rid of the X Plus 3 because it was, like I said, a really bulky and was taking up space and I don't do much ASA printing. But I actually do plan to keep this machine to use specifically for ABS and ASA prints in the future, especially since I'm going to try to build a Voron here soon. So I'm glad that I have this machine for that and if I ever plan to do any more technical materials in the future. I would like to take some time and create some tuned profiles for this printer to squeeze out every bit of performance that I can, but I didn't have time to do that for this review. So I showed you everything with the default profile. If after watching this video and others, which I definitely recommend that you do, you decide that this printer is a good fit for you, please remember to check out my affiliate link down below because it helps the channel out. Let me know what you guys think of this printer down in the comments. And if you plan on ordering one, let me know. Remember, you don't have to worry about any heaters or warping or spool placements if you just subscribe because your prints will always come out buttery smooth. I'll see you guys in the next one.